And my next guest started performing at the age of seven. Yep. Seven years old. He's a writer, performer, director, producer and a singer. Born in Melbourne with his first job at radio station 3UZ. He uh, has appeared in 21 productions before the age of 21. And Frank Housen uh, has been in so many things. And he's now writing. He's been writing for years, writing musicals. And one of the greats at the moment is Dream Lover. Now, Dream Lover is uh, coming to Melbourne on the 27th, but he's also got his own show coming into the chapel, Chapel of Chapel, and you're going to love to hear about this. It's all about two guys and their songs, and of course, some of these songs you're going to be hearing in it too. Frank's on the line right now. Hello, Frank. Hi, Lee. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Lovely to have you back on the program with me. Lovely to be here, mate, yeah. and thank you so much for having me. That, really appreciate it. That, that's, that's a pleasure. Gee, the three UZ days and radio auditions, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I used to do, uh, well, I started as the office boy, which is uh, kind of weird uh, synchronicity because, um, you know, uh, I, I lived, uh, when I was a child, I lived in uh, Nelson Street, Ballard Harbour, uh-huh. which is where Graham Kennedy lived with his uh, grandmother, and they now have a plaque outside the house. And uh, his first job was the office boy at 3UZ, so it was mine. So, uh, there you are. <laughs> for a time, we were uh, following, uh, well, I was following his footsteps, yeah. But uh, I certainly, you know, those three three years I spent at 3UZ taught me a hell of a lot. Hell of a lot. I was reading the other day that uh, when one of the acts wouldn't turn up or didn't turn up to, to go on the auditions program, they would call on you and you got a nickname, Magical Frank, and you go under, what, was you singing or playing piano or something, weren't you? Um, well, what would happen? Uh, I'd be the, um, you know, they they paid me extra money. I'd stay back and I'd set up the microphones for a radio audition, yeah. which uh, was compared by uh, John McMahon and Shirley Radford on piano. Yes, I remember. And uh, so I'd set up everything and make sure everything was running properly. And um, if it happened to be a, like a really stormy night and nobody showed up, <laughs> then um, I would be performing under um, about <laughs> a different about name. Ten different names. <laughs> <laughs> and no one. Look, I was probably listening in those days. I used to love radio auditions. It was just sensational. And yeah, uh, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was a funny thing. So yeah. I'd have to. I became quite a good mimic. Yes. And uh, we would go through my entire repertoire of every song that I knew. Mm. Uh, I think they drew the light in the night that I wanted to tap that. But uh, <laughs> anyway. I, uh, I recall your first single, and I, I can't find a copy of it anywhere, but it's uh, 17, 8 Young. 17, 8 Young. Mm. And, and you were um, 17 when you recorded it? I was 17 when I recorded it. Yeah. Stan Rove, Stan the Man. Yes. Um, who was, uh, became a bit of a mentor of mine because he was uh, one of the top DJs at 3UZ. And uh, he knew I'd been involved in theatrical shows and that. So anyway, he picked uh, this song for me and talked to uh, Horry Darkey, who was uh, yeah. then the representative of Astor Records. Mm-hmm. He talked Horry into signing me. And uh, so uh, we put a record out, and um, I think it, uh, it, 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 it scraped into the top 40. But anyway, I was a teen idol for about uh, three months. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Good on Did you cope with that Okay. Uh, it was, well, for a shy 17-year-old, it was yeah. a bit yeah, confronting, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I said to the... I, I always said that, you know, because I'd started so young in show business, uh, the weird thing, it was kind of easier for me to go out and perform to uh, 500 people yes. than it was, uh, you know, to talk to somebody one-to-one. So, and I think, I think a lot of people in show business kind of like that. They may be performers, but actually off stage they're quite shy. Yeah. I, I mentioned the intro, the uh, 21 major productions, uh, Australian productions, before the age of 21. One of those was Oliver. Yes, 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 mm. it was. Um, in fact, I was, uh, I was going to play Oliver, but uh, unfortunately by the time I had the fourth callback, my uh, voice had started to break. Oh, uh, but anyway, uh, but uh, I also my claim, one of my claims to fame was that um, I played Noddy in uh, the J.C. Williamson production of Noddy Goes to the Moon, Did which you? I think was one of the only uh, pantomimes yeah. that ever played uh, Her Majesty's Theatre. Go on. Yep, and uh, the age, the next, the age review was Rankhausen makes the most appealing naughty. 
<laughs> and um, I have had the review tattooed on my chest. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've always said, you know, hey, it was all downhill after that. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> you, you, you've done very, very well. And, of course, you mentioned pantomime there. Of course, it was the Tivoli in those days and uh, the princess, wasn't it? Yes. I, yeah, I was lucky enough to perform at the Tivoli. I was in the, uh, the Australian production of Anthony Newley's Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. Yeah, another great show too. No, yeah. no, fantastic. You, you've had a, just a wonderful, wonderful career. Well, when did you take up writing musicals? Uh, when I was a cast member of um, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Right. A- and, of course, you know, in that show uh, we had Trevor White, uh, John English, Marcia Hines. Isn't that where um, you met Richard, Barry Ferrier? Barry Ferrier, yeah. um, who was the man that I started writing songs with. Um, Rachel Livermore, we had... Uh, John Paul Young, uh, Stevie Wright, the great Stevie Wright, mm. um, Billy Miller from the Ferrets. Um, it was an, um, such an amazing cast that I think some of the best music that was happening would be happening in the rescue rooms, you know, before yeah. and after the show. So anyway, it was such, um, it was such uh, uh, um, an inspiring time that, uh, you know, that, that started me writing songs, and from there it started me writing musicals. Now, your latest musical, of course, we're going to talk about the show at Chapel in just a second's time, but uh, Dream Lover, it's coming into Melbourne on the 27th of December. Um, yes. How was that all penned? Uh, but, well, it, 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 you know, it's been, in the, it's been in the development stage or the making for about nine years, uh, uh, but it opened last year, um, around about this time, actually, um, in Sydney and uh, became a smash. And I have to tell you, David Campbell in this role is absolutely incredible. He has to be seen to be believed. Mm, I can't wait to see him, yeah. And, uh, and as, uh, as I think I may have told you previously, Dodd Darren, Bobby Darren's son, came out and he was in tears and he, he absolutely adored the production. And he said to me, you know, of all my life, I've wanted a legacy for my father, and mm. this, is, this is it. So um, I think anyone who comes to the show, they're going to be not only bowled over by the music and the production and the performances, but it's a story that will really touch your heart. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a lovely story. You can't wait to, to go along and see that. Now, of course, I suppose some of those songs will be featuring with the two guys and their songs. Plus, you've got a few little surprises for us, too. Tell us about that show coming up at Chapel. Well, uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Warren Wills, who uh, I hadn't actually met before um, before uh, a producer put us together to uh, work on a show called Genesis to Broadway, uh, which was a show that basically, basically traced the the history or the evolution of the popular song all the way back from, uh, you know, to the Jewish Hebrews, uh, Hebrew hymns, to, um, to uh, you know, what we now know as the American Songbook. Right. So, um, uh, you know, I was called in to write the script, and Warren, whose idea it was originally, uh, he was the musical director, and he is, a, um, he is an absolute musical genius. Anyone who's heard him play the piano will know that he's one of the great pianists in the world. Um, and anyway, we worked on that, and that was um, a smash hit at Chapel of Chapel. And, in fact, it turned into such a hit that uh, we had a return season, which was, again, a sellout. Um, and um, so from there, Warren asked me to go to Hong Kong with him because he'd been offered to do this show over there. And they needed a director, and he recommended me, and we went off to do the show in Hong Kong. And it was um, the people we were working for were just uh, uh, a, a nightmare. <laughs> so anyway, it turned into it turned into um, oh, I can't explain it. Anyway, we have a lot of funny stories about it, and, right, right. and unfortunately, we both walked off the show before it opened because did we uh, we weren't allowed to do what we did. Oh, uh, but we had some great songs, and we have some very funny stories about how not to do a show. In fact, I'm intending on writing a book called Lay Mess, The Unmaking of the Musical. <laughs> good title, good title. So yeah. um, we're going we're to tell a lot of funny stories during the night. We're yeah. going to play a lot of terrific uh, songs. And hopefully it will be an insight into how the songs came to be written 
and the creative process. It sounds like a very, very interesting concept, and uh, I'm sure we'll be there in the audience. You're going to then uh, have a couple of songs uh, from Chopper the Musical and Love Me Tender. Yes, yes. There are a couple of new uh, shows that we have in the pipeline. Um, and um, uh, Love Me Tender is going on the uh, first half of next year. Is it, right? Which is a uh, story about uh, the dim dark night of uh, Elvis's last uh, 12 months. And um, we recently had a, a workshop of it, uh, and um, uh, Bruce Woodley of the Seekers came and uh, he sat in on the workshop and watched it. And at the end of it, he said he teared up three, he teared up three or four times. He really, said, it's the first time I've ever felt that I actually knew him. Wow. So anyway, I've done a mountain of research into that. So I think anyone who loves Elvis is uh, going to get a very insightful night in the theatre and um, and uh, a new look at the man. And Frank, and is that opening in Melbourne or Sydney? Sydney? Melbourne? It'll open in Melbourne. Oh, good, good, good to hear. Now, we can come and hear all these stories and hear the music as well on the 16th of November, so the you week can. after next. Yep, half past seven. It's $40 a ticket at the chapel, and the booking number is 8290 8290 Frank Housen, as always, a delight to talk to you, pal. Thank you. Delight to talk to you. Thank you for Thanks supporting for my me. program. Thank nice you. to have you. Okay, take Bye. care, pal. Bye bye.